I'm happy to be here this evening. Uh, I am going to talk about uh, the biotech industry in Maryland. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of the Tech Council. I'm going to talk about the industry itself and then give you some numbers I'm calling industry by the dollars. The Tech Council of Maryland is the largest trade association in the state of Maryland that represents both tech and biotech industries. We have uh, about, four, about 500 members. Uh, they are, as I said, tech, biotech, service providers, your bankers, your accountants, your lawyers. You can't live without them. Uh, you also, your um, uh, private sector uh, nonprofit organizations and um, government and education are also members of our organization. Um, we're divided into two divisions, the MD Tech Division and the MD Bio Division. We are the only trade association throughout the United States that has tech and bio under one umbrella, which presents challenges. Uh, my, my theory is tech can't live without bio and bio can't live without tech, so I'm happy to, uh, to play under the umbrella with everybody. Uh, Utah is the only other state where their trade association for the state has both tech and bio under one umbrella. Most other states have separate associations that, that cover um, the areas. W within the organization, we also have two foundations, and both are heavily focused on STEM education. And in particular, the MD Bio Foundation has an MD Bio Laboratory, and it's a 45-foot semi-tractor trailer that goes around to high schools across the state trying to get young people, ninth graders and tenth graders in biology and chemistry to focus on biotech as a career path. Uh, we celebrated our 75th thousandth student uh, by taking the mobile lab full of chemicals on Capitol Hill in July. Um, the uh, sergeant at arms who's responsible for allowing those sorts of things on the hill said we had the best chemical inventory of any truck they've ever had on Capitol Hill. Uh, our, our mission is to promote the technology industry and to create an environment where technology companies can collaborate and grow and succeed. And a lot of the work that we do on behalf of our member companies is advocacy. So we spend a lot of time in Annapolis um, looking at legislation that is uh, harmful or helpful to the tech and biotech industry. We also spend a great deal of time on Capitol Hill uh, doing the same thing for our members. Just a quick breakdown. Um, currently, as of today, we have 477 members. Uh, they break out pretty evenly, 32%, both for our tech and bio members, and as I mentioned, our associates, education, affiliates, government, et cetera. So the biotechnology industry in Maryland. There are 400 bioscience companies in Maryland. That represents about 8% of the total biotech industry in the United States. We have, uh, the industry includes genomics, bioinformatics, proteomics, biotherapeutics, diagnostics, research tools, biomanufacturing and bioprocessing, biodefense, and agricultural, industrial, and environmental biology. The area of therapeutics is about 47% of those companies. Medical devices represents about 24% and research tools and diagnostics, about 19%, and then you have the rest of the, the family. Some of the big players in Maryland, and hopefully you've, you've heard of these, uh, Human Genome Sciences. They were in the news this week because the FDA advisory panel voted to endorse Benlista, a new product that they have, and they are recommending that the FDA approve it. It is the first new lupus drug in half a century. Martech Biosciences Corporation. Anybody heard of Martech, located in Howard County? They are a leading innovator in the development of nutritional products that promote health and wellness through every stage of life. And two of their uh, products are in 95% of the baby formula that's sold in the United States of America. Metamune? Okay, we've got a few more hands. Uh, they provide innovative biologics uh, like Synegus, which is a product that's on the market for the prevention of serious lower respiratory tract diseases, and Flumist. Everybody got their flu shot? Well, Flumist is the alternative if you don't want the shot. Not good for everybody, but. Um, and then there are some up and coming players throughout the state of Maryland. Anybody heard of Glicknick? Nope. 
Glicknick is over at the UMB Biopark. They are marketing new therapies for patients with cancer and autoimmune and inflammatory diseases. They are a startup company in the, in, in the accelerator over in UMB. Uh, biomarker strategies, heard of that one? They're a tissue-based cancer diagnostics company that is developing SnapPath, an ex vivo biomarker platform to improve the treatment of cancer. And Paragon Biosciences, there you go, you got one of those. Paragon is offering contract services for accelerating the development and manufacturing of biologics. They are also over at the UMB Biopark. There are 45 companies in Maryland conducting more than 150 clinical trials with preclinical pipeline development programs for novel biotherapeutics. The clinical focus strengths of these trials are in oncology, central nervous system, cardiovascular, and infectious diseases with a very strong vaccine development expertise. Maryland's bioscience cluster is the second largest per capita in the U.S. and ranked fourth overall in biotechnology companies. So a little bit about the industry by the numbers. Some rankings. Maryland ranks number two in the United States in the percentage of workforce in professional and technical positions. They rank number two in the U.S. in the percentage of workforce with graduate and bachelor's degrees. They rank second per capita in the U.S. in doctoral sciences and engineers. They are number one in per capita in health and biological sciences. And I just read today a new study came out, um, a new index by the Kauffman Foundation and the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation that Maryland ranks number three in moving toward a global innovation-based economy. These are all good things for you. Um, you're in the right place. You're in Maryland, and Maryland is uh, ranked very well in these areas. Maryland bioscience companies employ approximately 27,000 skilled workers. There is a, an equivalent amount of workers in our uh, federal and academic sectors. The average salary in these companies is $80,000 a year. Now that's everybody from the CEO to the lab technician to the HR person to the finance director. The average salary is $80,000. Revenue that Maryland bioscience companies provide back to the state is over $2 billion a year. I think it is because of that skilled workforce and the revenue that comes back to the state that the governor has invested more than $700 million in infrastructure over the past 20 years, in research parks, in institutions, in programs like the Maryland Venture Fund and the Maryland Biotech Tax Credit, which I'll get to a little bit later, and directly to investments in biotech companies. And in May of 2009, Governor O'Malley unveiled the Bio 2020 Maryland Initiative, a strategic plan for life sciences that calls for an investment over, of over 1.3 billion in the next 10 years. So the Maryland Biotechnology Tax Credit is one of the things that the state has to offer. It's now in its fourth year. The purpose is to stimu stimulate investment in biotech companies. $50 million have been raised by 40 entrepreneurial bioscience companies in the first four years. Those investors get an equivalent of uh, a tax credit. Um, it's a refundable tax credit up to 50% of their uh, investment with a maximum of $250,000 a year for either the company, the individual, or the firm that made the investment. It was introduced by Delegate Feldman uh, from Montgomery County in the, in the Maryland General Assembly and has become uh, sort of a model biotech tax credit program that states should offer. Uh, the Biotechnology Industry organiza Organization, which is the International Trade Association for Biotech Companies, uses that as a model all the time. The Maryland Stem Cell Research Fund, another example of a funding program here in the state, created by the Maryland General Assembly in 2006, not without controversy, but um, the fund is there. It is the third largest state-funded stem cell research program in the nation. Uh, to date, they have committed more than $68.4 million in 180 research grants from peer-reviewed peer research. Uh, I will say a lot of it has come to Hopkins, but that's a good thing. Um, these grants have been issued to Hopkins, to the Kennedy Krieger Institute, 
uh, to the University System of Maryland, as well as to some private sector collaborators like Global STEM, Veraxis Corporation, Life Technologies, Lanza, and Retrotherapy, all companies that are here in Maryland. The Maryland Stem Cell Research Commission recently announced an opportunity for collaborative research projects with the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, CIRM. Letters of intent for that next round of grants are due, uh, letters, uh, letters of intent for the Maryland Stem Cell Research Fund are due by midnight tonight. So if you didn't get your letter of intent in, too bad. Uh, but the CIRM program with California does not require a letter of intent. If you're interested in finding out more about those research dollars and the fellowships that are associated with them, um, it's the Maryland Stumps MCSRF.org. Um, the Maryland Technology Development Corporation, something that's near and dear to my heart, was uh, talked about in my introduction, affectionately known as TEDCO. Uh, I spent about 10 years there. Uh, TEDCO was created by the Maryland General Assembly in 1998 to tap into the assets of the federal labs and the great world-class research institutes that call Maryland home with the notion of taking the research that the federal government or the universities um, have put money into and science behind and innovation into and moving that technology out of the laboratory and into our everyday lives, to our bedside, to our homes, in our cars, um, in our computers. The, um, for five years now, TEDCO has been the, num the number one early seed stage funding organization in the nation. Um, that's a good thing because it's here in Maryland. Uh, it's a questionable thing because it's the public sector. Where's the private sector? Where are the angel investors? Why is little old TEDCO the number one uh, seed stage funder in the nation? It's okay. I take the credit for it. I'm still happy that I was there to be a part of it. Um, some of the programs within TEDCO that might be of interest to you, the University Technology Development Fund, UTDF, it helps university researchers develop and assess the viability of new technologies and new ideas. To date, 91 projects have been completed. They've, they've funded 103 projects, by the way. Uh, 91 have been completed. 38 have licensed their technologies to private sector companies, 29 of which are located in Maryland. A number of those have gone on to receive other TEDCO funding programs. Probably the most popular program at TEDCO is the Maryland Technology Transfer and Commercialization Fund designated to or designed to, to foster the collaboration between companies and university researchers and federal lab researchers. To date, 134 companies have received uh, funding from the MTTCF and completed their projects. They've funded over 200 companies, but a lot of them are still in the, in the works. But 130 projects are done. $9.3 million of state funding have gone into that. Uh, but these companies, what's important is that what they've been able to do since they've grown and the, the dollars that been, they've been able to get through the small, small business innovative research grants from angel investors, from venture investors. So the leverage of those state dollars, the 9.3 million that the state has put in, those companies have leveraged $394 million. That's a leverage of $42 for every state dollar in these companies. So it's a great story um, right here in Maryland. The Maryland Venture Fund is sort of the next step. So if you're a researcher and you get your UTDF and you do your proof of concept and then you go to TEDCO because you spin out your technology and create a company and TEDCO gives you money, the next place is the State's Department of Business and Economic Development. And they have programs within the Maryland Venture Fund. They have two programs. Um, the Challenge Investment Fund and the Enterprise Investment Fund. The first is a early, they both provide early seed stage funding for, for companies here in Maryland. And then an interesting thing that just happened recently at the federal level uh, through healthcare reform, there was this little, little old $1 billion project called the Therapeutic Discovery, um, Therapeutic Discovery Project Tax Credit. And it, it, the purpose was to accelerate the development of therapies and cures that will help reduce health care costs in the future, which was why it was in health care reform. And it, the credit was available to companies sort of retroactively that had already done work towards the goals of the tax credit program. Um, companies with 250 employees or less. Um, so in Maryland, 40 of our... 105 biotech companies got funding out of the program. It was a very competitive program. Uh, so 40 of our member companies got about 18 million of that, of that funding. Um, so I think, in summary, all of the programs that are here in Maryland, TEDCO, their programs, 
the state's programs. Um, I think Maryland is holding its own, and I would argue that uh, we're pretty, doing pretty darn well as an industry um, in this economy. And there are ample opportunities to further your research, to be entrepreneurial, to commercialize your innovations to products and services, um, or to work in world-class university research and federal laboratories. So whatever your pleasure, um, I think you can find it here in Maryland's vibrant biotech and bioscience research community. Thank you.